and welcome to episode three of The Connector. I'm Dave Darrington, your host and director of user enablement here at Azuqua. Our goal with this podcast series is to connect you with the people who are building and using Azuqua each and every day. And today, let's introduce our guest, Patrick Lawler, director of customer success here at Azuqua, and also services, I should mention, correct? Yes. So today what we're going to do is a follow-up more from a discussion that we had at Pulse, where we gave a topic called Your Data Sucks. And so they'll be a little bit different in that regard. What I'd like to do always first is uh, welcome you and let you tell us a little bit about yourself, Patrick, and how you came to be here at Azuqua. Great, Uh, really awesome to be here. Thanks for hosting. Uh, So I've been with Azuqua coming up on three years. Had spent five years prior at Amazon, which was an eternity. Uh, And how I came about Azuqua was I was in night school getting my MBA at the University of Washington and really had been fed up with a company the size of Amazon and the culture there. So I was really looking for a smaller organization where I could hop in, make immediate impact, uh, and really help grow the organization. Uh, So I came across Azuqua at a startup job fair of all places. And, you know, a couple weeks later, you know, I then start, I left Amazon (laughs) and was one of the first customer success managers here when we really didn't have any customers at the time and we were figuring out our whole go-to-market motion and who our customers were at the time. So that was, it's been a fascinating journey to where we are today and super excited about where we're headed. Fantastic. It sounds like it's been a lot of fun. With that in mind, so you found or discovered Zook or they found you and you're working previously at Amazon. So tell me this, Patrick, one of the questions I always ask everybody on this show is what excites you most about Azuqua, the product? What, what gets you really passionate about working with it and helping others, customers, learn how to use it? That's a really good question. Uh, so when I started with Azuqua, a little background story, I had no background in integration, no background really in SaaS, to be, to be to- totally frank. Um, but when I got in and I started to understand our product, I felt it was very unique to be able to be kind of a middle person that's helping all of the other tools that people are using connect. As part of that, I got to learn and get familiar with a lot of the other day-to-day SaaS products that people are using across many different job titles. Right. So whether that's learning a little bit about Marketo and HubSpot from a marketing perspective, Salesforce, uh, Dynamics, HubSpot from a CRM perspective, Zendesk ServiceNow from a support and incident perspective. So really started to get a, very, a lot of exposure to the different tools that have been built for all of the different job titles out there. As I've grown with the tool and with the company, what really excites me is, you know, everyone at their SaaS organization is very passionate about their product and the tool that they do. I feel it's very unique to Azuqua that we get to, one, be passionate about our own product. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as part of that, what we're doing is we're connecting to all the other tools people are using. So we get to inherently learn more about them. We get to learn about all these different ecosystems. And there's new ones that come up all the time. They're well, never heard of this. And then you, all of a sudden you find out there's thousands of people using it. Uh, so it's, it's a great way to learn about all the tools out there in the market. Not all, but many. Uh, and really understand what are the advantages? What drive people to, a di- to tools? Is it a UI thing? Is it a power thing? Is it a reliability item? You really kind of see across the board, and again, whether it's designed for SMB and mid-market based off of uh, kind of how it was designed, or does it have truly robust enterprise capabilities, but maybe that means the UI is a little more clunky, right. but we're seeing where people make the trade-offs when they ultimately choose what to purchase from a SaaS per- perspective. So that, to me, is something I find super interesting. I enjoy talking to all of our customers about their various not just the tools they use, but how they use them and why they ultimately need to build these connection bridges. Uh, And so that's kind of what brings me to the office every day is there's always something new from either our tool from a functionality perspective or a new tool that I'm going to be brought up almost every day. That's exciting. And and I have to agree with you. There's nothing like being exposed to this ecosystem of all these different cloud apps and what you can do. And it's like, you have this huge mound of Lego blocks and you can build a bridge, connect right. all these different things. It's super exciting. So to seg from that, let's go back to last week's talk where we were at Pulse 
And what we were doing at Pulse was we had a talk on, um, perhaps I'll let you talk more about this, on, on your data sucks. Welcome so, to the club. Yeah, <laughs> welcome to the club. All of our data sucks. Um, so here at, you know, let's put this in a different way. You're at the helm of customer success yeah. here at Azuqua. And what I learned in my previous life at Gainsight is data is super important to customer success. And customer su success is super important to the whole of the organization. Right. Because we are helping to keep our customers happy, growing, and learning. Uh, so tell me a little bit more about how you have dealt with data issues personally here at Azuqua, this common problem that our customers have. Absolutely. So I'll start a little bit uh, kind of going back to the presentation at Pulse that you referenced. So sort of the high level topic that we covered there was obviously you know, your data sucks is a broad topic. Where we chose to focus our discussion points was primarily around what are the common data challenges that people face when it comes to the making their data in the best possible state it can be. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have things like data silos, which can be created by having a lot of different SaaS tools uh, where that data is now housed and you need to figure out a way to bring it together. Maybe you don't have access to data. Uh, what, particularly, this is common on the usage side. Your product team owns this in certain ways. And so you've got to be able to either get that prioritized on the roadmap or find a way to get the data out of the tool. Um, Maybe the data is, doesn't even exist. You know, your, your team, your product, your company has not prioritized certain aspects of customer data or data that you're interested in having. Those are just a few examples of what we talked about. And part of an exercise that we did at the, in the session that we hosted was primarily around trying to get people to first identify what their data landscape looked like. Mm -hmm. Do they, can, can they identify, specific, what are the top three or four data items that they want to get do they know where those live do they have access if they don't you know what's the plan of action really start just kind of get them started given the amount of time in the session and really not trying to go into a very salesy pitch about azuqua refrained a little bit from some of the specifics that we had done that that would come across given we have azuqua as a tool and we'll talk about how it's powerful in this particular topic but when looking at that there's some ways that a tool like Azuqua can be beneficial to actually start to solve those problems. Primarily, if we're looking at either the data, data silo problem or the lack of access, those are problems that a tool or a company like Azuqua we can help solve. And that's something that you know now transitioning to back to data as a customer success individual here at Azuqua. What's been important? How have we go, gone about solving that? You know, one of the things that as a tool that I've let, or that I've developed from a skills perspective while I've been here is my knowledge around APIs, right. which has been super valuable. Again, not didn't know what an API was, couldn't tell you what the that was an acronym for when I first started. So what is that? Not to put you on the spot, but this is a application great program interface. Okay, so what's the so for those who aren't familiar with APIs, what's what's the deal? I mean, why is that important? Think about an API like you would a plug or an outlet. Okay, think of a SaaS product as maybe a wall in your house or just anything else, and maybe you need to connect them. Or think about um, the various uh, connection points that your TV, your, you know, your cable box might have, and you need to have a port between them. What an API is, is it, and the way I like to think about it as a plug, is it's a way that a company is going to expose the power, the capabilities of their tool for someone to interact with it from the outside. Mm -hmm. And... Because of that, with all the different tools and there's been a standardized language around that where there's mainly two, but it's moving more into the RESTful is the common terminology these days. Um, it's built off a fairly similar, a common language. And so when the, when the applications, when you tie them together or build that bridge, they're able to more easily connect. The data moves more seamlessly. You have to interact with it a lot less to try and mold it to make it work between the two systems. There's still some massaging that you might have to do in certain areas. But with these APIs, you have the ability to build these connection bridges between the various products. So that's, and with where I started to gain that knowledge was then super helpful because one of the big problems, we'll start with the first one, in terms of connecting the different applications, breaking down those data silos from the various SaaS products. 
When you start to understand how the data exists within those systems, then you can really start to know how I want to plug in to, you know, let's say if I look need to get data out of my support tool Zendesk and get that into my CRM Salesforce. I can start to figure out how I want those to interact and by understanding how APIs work and how the data structures flow in and out, I'm able to accurately design how that data flow is going to come in and out of those applications. And I don't have to be an admin in those tools or I don't have to be a certified admin in those tools to understand what I need to do with the data. I just need to understand how the data is going to be represented when it comes out of that tool and then how can I move it to the other one. And especially with Azuqua, one of the advantages is we've taken out in realistically 98% of the code that you would ever have to see. Gotcha. So you've got a drag and drop interface to tell, hey, this one field from Zendesk, I want to map to this one field in Salesforce based off of a specific event or a trigger point, which is going to send that data along its journey. Cool. So, so you made it a lot easier for the business user. So someone like me who is not going to be a C++, C Sharp, whatever programmer can, can do all this stuff. Correct. It's more like a natural language where I, as a, I'm focusing on a business task, maybe I'm a project manager, maybe I'm a director of customer success, whatever. If, as long as I can see it and I can connect to it, then I can do something. Right. Right. Very cool. And so there are, there are a number of other tools out there in the market to do this. You know, Zuqua is not the only company that is trying to solve this problem, but what's unique with our tool is the highly custom customization level that you can get to and the robustness of the solutions that you're able to build. You can really build out almost to your wildest dreams, if you will, how far and extensive these processes can go. The amount of data and the types of data that you need to work with. So it's, it's very powerful in that aspect. Now moving down to the next problem, the access to data. Primarily, I would say the most common example we've seen is when this is usage data that's tracked or logged by your product teams. Often it will be stored maybe in a data warehouse or it'll be stogged in, uh, logged in some backend system that your product team owns. You have no idea what it is. You don't know where it is. You wouldn't even know how to plug into it um, at all. Because of the knowledge that myself and others have been able to gain about APIs, we can ask our product teams to simply spin up one of these outlets to one of our internal databases or an internal tool that we have. What that eliminates is a, a very big problem that people run into. You're asking for data from your team, either, and if they're logging it, you have to get something prioritized on the roadmap. Mm -hmm. You have to ask them to do a significant project to get you access to data, build a report, put it in a location, send you a file, etc., which can often take a lot of time. What we found to be a fairly minimal amount of work for a team to do uh, that helps unblock that problem a lot sooner is if they're able to stand up an API endpoint or something, you know, think about an outlet to that data source within your tool. So this has been our approach internally at Azuqua to helping get a lot of this usage data out and available is we're, we're, a, young, we're a lean team you know, we are a startup, and so get it, having making sure people are working on the most highly valuable parts of our roadmap is very critical. Data is critical, but can I weigh how much we actually want them to do versus if I can ask them to do that and I can take the rest of, I can take the journey mm -hmm. the rest of the way, I've allowed that, I've asked them to do the minimal amount. I can then take the data they provide and I can do whatever I want with it. Store it in a place like Snowflake, throw it into a Google Sheet, for example, uh, I have, there's a lot of different things, but as long as I can then, and I'm provided a location to point where I need to go, I can, using a tool like Azuqua, call into that data source, pull data back that now I have access and control on, now I can decide what I want to do with that data. And this was part of one of the feedback that we got from our session was people wanted to understand how for a problem like that, or for some of these key problems, what what tools are out there, or what are the things right. I should be thinking about in terms of an approach? And this is where I go to, uh, you could call a little bit of shameless plug, plug of a Zoopla, <laughs> but this is where a tool like us can really handle and break down many of those barriers from, or in those data challenges that people face. We can connect to all the different SaaS tools that you're leveraging in the market today, and then additionally for the very you know, usage-based data around your product. Using a Zoopla, if your product team can enable a plugin, or not, excuse me, not a plugin, but an API on top of one of your products or where those data is stored, you have the power now with a Zoopla to actually call into that. You would just need to understand 
essentially how you have to plug in. But that's just a few steps that they can usually walk you through that's far less cumbersome than asking them to do the whole, the whole gamut of, of the work. <laughs> so that's an example of, and I know I've been in this, this position as well, and I say, hey, I need to get this data from here to here, which is part of the reason I came to Azuqua, because I was so, I, I needed my training data, my educational data, to come into, at the time I was using Gainsight, and so I needed to bring that into an object and knit it all together so I had a, had a universal view. And my, my team say, and they say, Dave, I'm sorry, I really want to help you. I've got this deadline. And they say, and so we can get the minimal amount of information. Somebody give me a minimal, like 10 minutes of help. And then they're off back to doing what's important. But now I, who am compelled to solve this problem, can solve the problem. Exactly. So, exactly. you know, this really looks like an opportunity for you to show us something. Yes. And, and, and I think what, what I do want to show is... It's just one example of one piece of data that we're extracting from our system from this previous method of like working with the product team to and expose that outlet that I can essentially hook into and just show you that it doesn't have to be super complicated. There is a little bit of learning just in terms of how you have to interact with an API, but if you can get over, once you get through that learning curve, which really is not too difficult, especially if they're able to walk you through a couple of the basic steps to do so, you can really unlock yourself in so many ways. And then when you'll get a lot more intelligent in terms of how you can interact with your product teams to unlock even more data and what, and then bring that into your system, which then that in the customer success world, it's not necessarily quantity over quality, mm -hmm. but if the data you're getting out is a higher quantity of the quality you're, of you're hoping for, that's the, that's the dream. And so if you have the tool set to do that yourself, you'll never be blocked. The only time you'll be blocked is maybe when you need it in a different outlet for them to expose. But if you've gotten into this rhythm, it can become a very joint effort to do that. And then the whole company will start to reap the benefits as an example. Absolutely, cool. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get you on product. So yes. we'll show an example of Azuqua. Okay, Patrick, I think we are ready to go now. So what we have is we've loaded up Azuqua and we have your test environment yep. uh, or a production environment actually. Uh, why don't you tell me what you want to show us? And again, I think this is super valuable that we transition what we've learned. And again, we're not comprehensive in this episode where we're talking about all the ways that your data can exactly. suck. This is just that blocker of, I don't have the data I need to do my job. And in this case, let me, let me tee this up. You were, number one, saying about access to data, and number two, you're the director of customer success here at Azuqua. So what's compelling and exciting to you is you worked with your developers, our developers, got an API to open up our data warehouse, read-only, safe, and now you've got access to this. So show me, show us yeah. what it is you can do now to learn about and then map that in, if you would, to customer success metrics or goals. Absolutely. So one of the, just to kind of highlight the metric that I'm going to show you on kind of how simple using Azuqua, and again, I say simple with a little bit of quotes around it, but <laughs> um, how simple it can be to get a certain piece of data out. And this example, where I'm going to show how we, we built one of these flows, or you could think of them like a workflow um, mm -hmm. in other terminology. But one of the early pieces of data that we were lacking was what are the specific applications that someone is connecting to inside of Zuqua? You know, we are a connecting platform. You know, integrating all these services is one of the key things that we do. Not having insight to that is not great because now you not you won't necessarily know when your customers may be swapping out applications, when they're reducing the applications that they're leveraging, or more interestingly, if you're looking at you know expansion, upsell opportunities, or just things that you could bring up in an executive business review. What are the new connectors that they're bringing into the library, so that you have, you know, call to actions being gain sites, you know, terminology there, but you've got a new piece of data that can be an activation point for engaging with your customer. So what I'm going to show you here is just a very simple process that runs once a day, but what it's doing is it'll take in the list of all of the live accounts mm -hmm. um, and it'll process them individually and basically use their account ID, go into our data warehouse and extract back two, two, two items of data. One, what's the total number of connection points that they have? So we can have a, just a new numeric count to be able to uh, basically have changes and do measure deltas, if you will. 
And then also which specific ones. So from a more like readability perspective, oh, a customer added Zendesk. Now I can go right. engage with them on that because maybe we've had a number of other customers who've done Zendesk scenarios that it's a good opportunity to go engage, provide them with some content or see if this is some, there's something they're trying to explore where we have an opportunity to do that with them. Got it. So what I wanna show here is, first I'm gonna show you the, how it works. So when this pro sub process works, it basically gets entered with a number here. Now I'm gonna do it manually, but this is happening programmatically on a daily basis and mm -hmm. I don't have to interact with it since I've set up these processes. Fabulous. But what happens is this process will receive a number like this. This number rep is specific to my own personal account, if you will, within Azuba. Okay. And what happens when it runs, and I'm just gonna hit this test button, is it's gonna go into our system and it's gonna return back the number of connectors that exist within my account. And then two, what specific connection points are enabled within active processes. So now it's completed. Again, the data format, if you're not familiar with, does, isn't very important, but the, what comes back is, so we can see there, number of connectors is 12. So now if this is running on a daily basis, we can start to actually have a log. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? So you can start to build measurables and health scoring around that. And then more from an engagement and being knowledgeable about your, what your customer is doing. Let's say they added JIRA into the library. Well, that's a really interesting item because we have done a lot with JIRA with our, with our customer base. So now if this was a customer that had that shows up as new, I've got a lot of engaging material that I can go in and reach out to them on. And so this is a very proactive and interesting way mm -hmm. for us to learn more about what our customers are doing and then be able to engage in a more knowledgeable way that's we're trying to drive thought provocation, thought provo provoking material so that they're actually trying to engage, learn more, grow, uh, versus if we don't have this data, we don't necessarily know exactly what our customers are doing. And you might, and before we had this data, it'd be, we might start with a scenario like Zendesk and Salesforce, like I alluded to earlier, Maybe we're, you know, we're still talking with them, but behind the scenes, maybe they've added Slack in there. Maybe they've also added Jira in there, but we just don't, we didn't have the visibility. Now we do have that visibility. So then we can engage, hey, is this, did you add Jira? Is this part of your existing process that we're building an extension to? Or is this a whole new process entirely that we should, that you're interested in talking about? And how this looks in the back end, or when you kind of go back to the flow view, the workflow process, if you will, is really just these three steps. One is this child flow is basically is where that initiates. It basically receives that account number like I showed you in the previous screen. That's what right. this org ID field represents. We take that and then using, again, this is sort of API terminology that you would become familiar with as you got into a little bit more of an advanced state. But if you're familiar with how, with how these HTTP protocols work and how those relate then to APIs, I can call into, we see here, this is api.azuqua.com. I'm calling into our internal service. Mm -hmm simply with this one value, and I've specified exactly how it needs to be formatted. And what I'm gonna get back essentially are these data fields that I've asked it to. So the number of connectors and then the list of connectors. And so when this comes back and all the processes that leverage this, that data can now be proliferated into many different locations depending on specific need. But again, at a core level, this is the process that gets me that piece of data. So the hardest part is understanding how to configure this HTTP postcard or whatever the protocol right. is that you're going to interact with the API. But then as soon as I, you run that, then your challenge is now I have the data, which is a great problem. Now you can start to look at it, sanitize it as needed, but then also, okay, I have the data. Where do I want to put it? Where do I want to, how do I want to use it? How do I build this into the daily, weekly, monthly interactions of our customer success team or our company as a whole? But this just is a very simple example of how we worked hand in hand with our developers given given our ecosystem, but also we saw this as a great way to booster the technical knowledge from our business side of the house, meld that with the product knowledge from the product side of the house and leverage their efficiencies around, build us an API or, or a plugin that we can get to. You guys continue to work on everything else that's crucial to the roadmap, but here will be these little chunks where we'll ask you to enable this endpoint for us to go in and access the data. Absolutely. And this is then, I can see this scale quite well because you know we're relatively small and this is typifying an example of, hey, we didn't have any insight. We didn't have any visibility on what our customers are doing. Now with very 
relatively modest amount of work, a mm-hmm. little learning. Yeah. You now have this process here where you retrieve all this information, and you're beholden to no one. Exactly. Unless if something else goes down. But. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, um, exactly. But the end of this is you could have a, like a CS ops function, and that function builds all these things and builds reports Absolutely. and dashboards if we were to use. And again, following on to Pulse, we were at last week uh, to tell the story with Gainsight, for example. What with Gainsight you could do is have many of these different things oh, yeah. and have uh, like a call to action uh, listed for a customer success manager to follow up upon. And again, now you're looking outbound or maybe you might get that into Gainsight and have it generate all that. So you have this palette of verbs exactly. where you can reach in and get system from other tools. Ultimately, for you and customer success, you could build to that. What's my customer health? Uh, should I call them? Or you could get, and, and I hesitate to use the word creepy because we're way beyond that in this modern world <laughs> where I go and I try to do something and you know I've gone to many free trials and I get these messages like, oh, I see that you're doing X. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know the story now. Right. But it's if you're there and you're learning, that's important to you. You spam filter it out later after you've learned. Yep. So if I were going in, and in your example, I saw, hey, I put in a new connector to Jira or to Zendesk. You could send a little bit of proactive, here's some documentation exactly. on that. Exactly. Or, or if you saw that connector and you saw that a flow was failing on our end, like we being a SaaS company and helping, we could, from a customer success position, have a, um, what we call that, uh, a motion, and that motion would say, okay, I see that you created new connectors and it failed. And I, you created a flow and it failed. And automatically send some documentation to say, here's how you do configure this. Yep. You never touched anybody. And from a CS perspective, that means a human being may or may not actually have to engage in the call. You, right. You would want to at some point, but in a low touch, tech touch. Exactly. Super huge. Yes. Yes, precisely. All right. Anything else you'd want to tell me about this? No, I think this up? is just kind of one example that I wanted to show for you know how you can you the non developer the non product person with working with them and developing a motion around data where you know you're enabling them to do the minimal amount of work and you're willing to take on a little bit of the extra legwork you can really accomplish and break down the data silos the lack of access uh, maybe even if there's data is not being tracked get them to track data because then they'll expose an endpoint and maybe they were just worried about this whole behemoth of a project you reduce it down to a very palatable portion and then you and the team can run with it from there that's fantastic patrick all right with that we've we've had a good discussion here this follows on from pulse it's super exciting i I, i'll tell you that what i really love um, in doing this podcast is learning something new and i still think this is awfully fun the coolest thing that I've always felt about Azik was that you visually can see this and test this and you can see you're getting information back. So for those of you who are business users trying to do all this kind of stuff, get in, do a, do a free trial, start playing with some connectors. We're here to help you out. It's awesome. So if you want to learn more, uh, remember, please visit our website, www. Azuka.com. We have a brand new uh, resources section where you can list all these podcasts and our new training. Um, and Go ahead and request a trial. It doesn't cost you anything to get in and start up and, and play around with us. Patrick, once again, thanks for sharing. Great. Glad to be here. And to our audience, thank you for joining. And get out there and make some connections.